We just heard from the Israeli military that they killed three hostages that were found uh, dead, I guess, a couple of months ago. They killed them early on in their um, a bombing campaign. It is... It almost feels like shock that Israel was going to admit this, but there definitely seems to be more pressure on them. There's also been reports out now how when there was an outcry about uh, the... Um, hunger situation in Gaza, Israel let in a trickle of food and is now sort of like tightening up again on it. Um, we also have a story of the first uh, UN worker uh, in, at least in the, the past year, who was uh, killed by a sniper in the West Bank. This after um, an American citizen also killed by an Israeli sniper, uh, which Joe Biden claimed was like an accidental shot that ricocheted, I guess, off the, off the ground. ground up into her head. Sounds like something Trump would say. And uh, with a lot of evidence that um, that, in fact, was not the case, that it wasn't a, a bullet that bounced on the ground. Uh, no evidence that it was the case. Uh, no evidence. And the Biden administration has been kind of propping up Yoav Gallant as somebody who's more reasonable within Likud, the defense minister who they can reportedly work with in this administration. News broke this morning that Netanyahu is apparently planning to fire Yoav Gallant from his post. Uh, that's maybe it hasn't happened yet, but it's this, as we've been saying, the reality of Netanyahu and the far right of the Israeli government being together on this has not changed since October 7th. It's been that reality for that this ex entire period. Solidified. Yeah. Here is Ilhan Omar on uh, with uh, CNN's Caitlin Collins and um, commends uh, Harris on a rhetoric, but says oh, we got to do more. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because there's really important constituencies in places like your home state and Michigan and others. There wasn't a lot of time spent on on the Israel Hamas war that is that is underway last night between the two candidates. But when they did talk about it, despite Trump saying that Israel would cease to exist if Harris was elected, they largely agree on the policy of that, of supporting Israel and backing it on a ceasefire hostage deal. She said that, that she would work around the clock. But she didn't offer any specifics on, on what that would look like. Was that a, enough of a plan in your view? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there is a, um, I believe there is a great appreciation um, in, in the empathy and compassion that she offers. Uh, but I do believe that voters, both in, in my district um, and in, in Minnesota and across the country that care um, want to actually see either an implementation uh, of a ceasefire um, or an actual uh, concrete answer um, to how we get a ceasefire and why we have not been able um, to utilize uh, the leverage that we have in order for that ceasefire to be implemented. And of course, I assume by that, in part, you mean sending arms and weapons to Israel, which is Something, you know, we keep hearing tangible actions that could be taken, right? We are supplying the weapons that are causing the catastrophe. Uh, and so, you know, to, to say you're working around the clock and, and not, you know, take any actionable steps that the, the voters um, and, and the American people can see um, makes that rhetoric really hard to, to swallow. And is that... We, 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 uh, I want to hear this follow-up. You know, that was her rhetoric last night. And so when you hear about the implementation of a ceasefire deal, we hear all, all the time from the administration, take it or leave it is on the table, take it or leave it is on the table. I talked to uh, the Israeli ambassador to the UN last week. He said the idea of a ceasefire being close is, is just not realistic at this moment. And I think, and I think that is where um, it does feel disingenuous, right? Because we hear um, our Secretary of State Blinken, um, who has now traveled to uh, Israel, I believe, 11 times, um, you know, who makes these statements um, as he's departing uh, the, the country for Egypt and says we are, you know, very close and deal has been reached. Um, Bibi Netanyahu is there, uh, and then we see the, the humiliation that follows as Bibi takes the stage right after he departs and says there is no such thing. Uh, and I think 
for a country that is not only considered as a leader uh, in in the world, but a country that is directly in in support in in supplying these these weapons um, to to Israel to. Uh, you know, not not do that after the first time that they backtracked on on what they promised us. Not do that on the second time. Not do that on the third time. Um, now, you know, 11 months in, uh, I, th I think it is starting to to sound like this is not a, a serious thing um, that uh, our secretary is is working on. Yeah. Congressman Hilhan Omar. Understated, uh, but uh, accurate. Carrot and stick, right? So she's opening with the empathy thing to appeal to Harris and her supporters, I guess, but then giving her a path forward because Ro Khanna now has come out on cable news and said that she should talk about enforcing the law. Elizabeth Warren has done the same and Ilhan Omar as well. Sanders. Still being like, I'm a team player, but this is what you can do. Um, I was just like appreciative of that because can we pull up this tweet? This was from over the weekend. This is why I, she needs to now begin to re, like the Biden and Biden officials are complaining to ABC that she didn't defend him more in the debate. Selena Wang of uh, of ABC reports some White House officials are uh, also disappointed that Harris did not stand up for Biden during the debate. A former Biden White House official tells me many feel Harris missed opportunities to acknowledge that Biden deserves thanks for his service, according to the source. So the point is that. They're already she 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 tried to distance herself from Biden in the, in the debate by not really mentioning him. She at one point said, I'm not Joe Biden. I'm Kamala Harris. She didn't go out of her way to full throatedly defend Biden in any way because he's an extremely unpopular president right now. So a way that she can distance herself from him is also on this matter, on this matter. And there are a lot of lawmakers trying to give her the the path forward to do so but if the biden administration and his like lame duck lackeys are going to whine and complain in the press that she's not being more forceful in her defense of him first of all th then why not go all the way all uh, full bore on this and actually do something that is both right good policy and in her interests to distance herself from him in some t meaningful way because uh the, all, for all the talk of uh, all these Reagan staffers uh, supporting Kamala Harris, there's no votes there. There's not, that's not going to turn people out. We know p undecided voters turn out because they're activated by the partisan leading they already have, not because they're right, right in the middle and right. are waiting to see who's the most center of all the candidates. So they're just, this, this like sort of conservative little gamble they're doing is, I think, because they think they can walk to a victory and they don't need to break that glass and actually change the policy because they'd rather win with these freaks than with people who uh, expect people to stop a genocide. I mean, I think that's true. And I think that's the biggest... I mean, to me, that's the biggest uh, concern I have about Harris in this moment. Like the biggest concern, w the the thing, and I mean, both from a, a a governance perspective and, frankly, even an electoral strategy. Um, I remember Chuck Schumer saying i've got schumer uh, yes he spoke about himself in the third uh, par person i've got schumer i've got ryan speaking of paul ryan and i've got clinton and we're going to make a deal at that time uh there was a lot of offshored cash uh american companies in the wake of uh, world war ii were given a tax break essentially by eisenhower which was you can uh, you you do not have to pay tax on money until you repatri repatriate it to this country. And over the years, what corporations started, to, and the, the idea was to build, it was basically to you know, enhance the Marshall Plan, if you will, and build industries and build markets in other uh, countries. And uh, then uh, American corporations were like, oh, wait a second, uh, let's not repatriate the money until we get a Republican office. And then when George Bush comes by, he'll do something called the American Jobs Act. And that means you can repatriate the money instead of at a full lesser corporate tax rate than uh, we have in this country. An even more discounted tax rate. 5%. And it's going to create all sorts of jobs in America. We can look that up. The American Jobs Creation Act created no jobs. Uh, in fact, uh, the company that promoted it, Hewlett Packard, actually cut like 15,000 jobs in the wake of that. Nevertheless, this money was still being offshored. It built up uh, 12 years later, 
And Chuck Schumer was like, I've got a deal and we're going to we're going to collect 7 percent taxes on that and earmark a bunch of it to to infrastructure building. And I'm convinced that the Clinton campaign wanted to. Um, and they protected. Remember, they never went after Paul Ryan or uh, or Mitch McConnell in relation to Trump. They could have. They could have made it toxic for them to be supportive of him, and they didn't. And I think they're, they thought they were going to win, and they wanted to fashion the constituencies that supported them, and they wanted to make sure to basically not vilify Paul Ryan, make this deal more palatable, and seem like a... And, and they, they tried to do this. And, um, you know, places like Michigan and Wisconsin... Uh, and 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 Pennsylvania, they're sensitive maybe to the idea of repatriating money without any um, like uh, you know at a lesser uh, tax rate because that's going to encourage a certain amount of offshoring. So maybe you don't visit there in the, in the final weeks because you want to build up like uh, you know your votes maybe in not. the suburbs. <laughs> yeah. And maybe you want to uh, you know maybe you're worried more about like the uh, the Sun Belt strategy than the Rust Belt strategy. Oy. and i don't like that i don't if if that's harris is thinking that's well, not good i don't know if harris is thinking that but certainly there are people walking around that white house is still you know i mean it's biden's campaign like we have to also remember like these are very a lot of the people making decisions and again the buck stops with her she's the candidate but the infrastructure of the campaign is still all the biden people now i will say this that the negative partisanship that exists today the democrats are far more uh, conscious of it than than they were in 2016 yeah so they perceive that as motivating a lot and if they can pick off or cut into like you know basically a rear guard action um you know uh, against trump and republicans that's also their thing but um it's just something like people need to be conscious of it you know the, the work does not end if uh, uh kamala harris gets elected president the, the work starts the next day the next day hey folks don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show we do it every day at 12 p.m eastern for about two and a half hours we even take phone calls you should check that out